Welcome back to the channel and in this video I'm going to talk about how I day trade options and this is just what works best for me. Everybody is going to have a different style and different risk tolerance. So some of the things I'm going to talk about in this video are why I trade options, how I trade them and the best way to do that is I'm going to show some of the best setups that happened last week and then I'm going to do a trade recap on a zoom trade that I took on Friday January 15th. So the reasons why I trade options first it was because when I initially got started a year and a half ago when I funded my small account, it was a way for me to get around the PDT rule. If you do some research on a cash account, the cash settles overnight. So you're able to use that cash to trade the next day and you're not confined to those PDT rules. Not sure why that is. I think it's kind of silly myself, but at the end of the day, I don't really care. I just want to take advantage of it when I can. And that was my way to be able to trade every single day and avoid being confined to a number of trades per week. And the second reason for me is risk. Yes, options can be riskier than trading stock at times, but being that I'm a scalper and I take those quick moves, as long as I'm in and out quick, I usually don't have any issues. Obviously, I just took a really big loss recently and that was because I was trading too big a size and I did not get out of my losers quick enough. But when I don't make mistakes like that and I focus on the size that I am comfortable with, which is three to five contracts, Worst case scenario, I just take a loss, but it's not that big. But to go a little bit more into the risk, the reason why I like options is because risk is premium paid, meaning that the amount that I have in the trade is my absolute max loss. And even though I have yet to be in this position and I don't ever want to be in it, if for some reason I made a massive mistake and I was holding a loser and I held it overnight, that worst case scenario, I'll just take a big loss as long as I stick to trading small and I don't continue to add to a loser because that is where the disaster can happen. Compared to stock where if for some reason I got stuck and I was stubborn and I decided to hold to see what happens where there is no max loss, it's until I decide to get out of the position. So really options are a way to protect me from myself in case I let things get a little out of hand and as long as I'm trading small, I'll never destroy my trading account. And also the last reason why I like to trade options is just because it's less capital intensive. If I trade on average anywhere from three to five contracts on Tesla, I'm able to have a lot less money in my account compared to what I would need if I was trading three to 500 shares. That was the why, now let's talk about how I trade them. So when I initially got into options, I was pretty intimidated, but when I took a step back and realized that they have a bid and an ask, just like the stock does, all that I have to really do is realize that when the stock moves, the option will move as well. So as long as I am focusing on a strike that is close to the current stock price and the stock has a nice move, the options will move as well. So I always focus at the money or next strike out of the money and I'm always trading same week expiration because being that I'm a scalper, the time decay does not affect my style. And just like anything else, when I was new to options, it took me a while to figure it all out, but there's a lot of great resources and YouTube channels that can teach the basics. And a really great YouTube channel that talks about not only the basics, but also complex trading strategies is Option Alpha. I've watched a lot of their videos and I like them a lot. Now I'm not doing any sort of complex option trading strategies. I'm trading directional options. So when I think the stock is gonna go up, I'll buy calls. When I think the stock is gonna go down, I buy puts. So for the basics and even more advanced strategies and terminologies, Option Alpha is a great place to learn. Now I wanna go over some of the best trade setups from last week and how I would have tried to trade them. Starting with NVIDIA on Monday, NVIDIA had the big gap up. It was consolidating a handful of days prior, got above the nine, the 20, the 50 MA. So I really like when price action is close to the moving averages and then it starts to move away from them because it could possibly kickstart the next leg higher. And it was gapping right up to this prior pivot high where it clearly got rejected pretty hard. So I think if it can get there again and break it, it has a chance for some momentum. So the levels that look pretty good to trade around are that prior pivot high, 546.06, and pre-market high, 545.32. NVIDIA had the one minute opening range break, very quick trade, definitely not easy to take. But what I like is that the first one minute candle was red, so now it has a high of day, 536.83. And when it breaks that high, that would be my area to go long. And I always like to trade the first strike out of the money. So I would have been trading the 537.50s, and the moment that this thing starts to speed up, I just take those profits. And once it broke, this first one minute high had a pretty insane move. So those 537.50 calls would have had a very nice move as well. And then here's the next setup that I see. So I'm a big fan of opening range breaks and flag patterns like I talk about all the time. And when that move is really big off the open, I usually like to give the first flag a shot. And here's where it broke pre-market high, prior day high, had a handful of minutes of consolidation, finally pulled back a little bit, which is good held the nine, held VWAP, and when it got back to high of day, which was 548.05, I always try to anticipate the break just a little bit 
I would have traded the next strike out of the money, so the 550s, and then the moment that I get a quick move, I just take it. And once it broke high day, had about a five point move, went above 550, so now that those contracts were in the money, they would have moved really nice. Docu, so this ended up having a really nice setup, wasn't even on my watch list, but this is a phenomenal opening range break setup. So just looking at the daily chart, it's had a pretty nice move, got back above the nine, back above the 20. When momentum names are trading above the nine and the 20, I wanna focus to the long side. Had a very strong move, pulled back to the nine and was gapping up this morning. And as you can see, there's definitely prior resistance, but this was some pretty aggressive selling. If there is anybody still short, I would think once it starts to get over this area, they're gonna start feeling some pain and that could possibly create some momentum. So some of the levels that looked good to trade around was this prior pivot high, 246.39 and pre-market high, 247.04. Now to look at a lower time frame chart. So that very first candle was green, which I don't love, but it got through prior days high and it got through pre-market high. The thing that I do like about this is that that next candle closed slightly red, but you can see very big bottoming tail off the VWAP showing that buyers are clearly in control and it set a very quick opening range. So it was only two minutes, but this is like a three minute opening range break. That high of day was 247.96. So that would be the area that I wanna go long. I always try to anticipate a little bit. So I would have traded the 250 calls and when this broke high of day, look at this insane move. Now, obviously this is very extreme. Not every single opening range break is gonna have that much follow through, but this just goes to show the power of momentum. Broke high day and went straight up seven points before finally showing some weakness. Now I never would have held for that entire move, but definitely an opportunity to catch a handful of points very quick. And that's exactly what I look for. Take the quick scalp and then just move on to the next trade. And even though there is a bit of a flag pattern right here, I probably wouldn't have taken this just because my personal preference, that's very extended. So the context in which the flag is created is very important for me. If the chart is very extended on the intraday, even if it's forming a flag, sometimes I'll just stay away because sometimes those flags don't have follow through. I much prefer when the opening range break has a nice move, doesn't go too far, then starts to consolidate, form a clean flag pattern, and then go again. Wednesday the 13th, Zoom had a pretty nice setup. So Zoom was a little beat up on the daily, had a very nice green candle the day prior, reclaimed the 9 EMA. So when momentum names are above the 9, try to focus on the long side like I've mentioned before. It had the gap up this morning. It was trading right near that prior pivot high. So some of the levels that look pretty good to trade around was that prior pivot. 365.01, pre-market high 363, pre-market low 348 just to have, even though I'm gonna be focused to the long side. This is gonna be a good example because it goes to show that sometimes it takes a little bit off the open for things to set up clean. And even though Zoom broke pre-market high on that first one minute candle, there's no real clean setup. So I'm a big fan of consolidation and things being tight. When they're not tight, I just leave them alone. And Zoom pushed up the pre-market high and then sold off pretty aggressively, but it is starting to wake up on the daily so buyers stepped back in, and as you can see, found some support right around 350, got back above VWAP, put in a higher low, starting to work its way back to high of day. And as it gets close to high of day, this is where I see a clean setup. So it starts to consolidate, puts in a bit of a wedge pattern, close to the nine. Also knowing that high of day is above, so there are technical levels, high of day and that prior pivot, 365.01. I always try to anticipate a little bit, so on the break of this prior pivot, go along the 365 calls, next strike out of the money. And then as you can see, starts to speed up, gets right through that prior pivot. And then the moment that the tape starts to speed up, I just get out of the trade. So it was a pretty quick momentum move, but there was about two and a half, three points to get. And if you're more patient than me, then obviously there's a lot more to be had because once it finally started to build above and cleared that pivot, it had a very nice move higher but I'm not that patient. When I get a quick two, three points, I take it. Those were some good setups from earlier in the week. Now let's get into my Zoom trade from Friday. Had a very nice three-day move, started to take out a lot of this red. So if there is anybody who's short, they're probably starting to feel some pain. Had the gap up this morning and I thought that it had some room to the 50 SMA on the daily. So some of the levels that look pretty good to trade around was that prior pivot area, this 384.95. It was clearly above that, just letting me know that buyers are still in control and also pre-market high 399.50. So the first one minute candle on Zoom is down, which I like. And this is gonna be an example of a one minute opening range break. I don't take them often, but when they set up this clean, I think it's worth a shot. And as you can see, I'm trading a little smaller. I'm only trading three contracts. So I'm looking to trade the 400 calls. I just wanna see this get back above VWAP and clear that high a day, 398.42. Now this is a very quick pattern off the open. So the moment that I get any move in my favor, 
I'm looking to take profits. Quick pattern, quick profit taking. And now I just wanna see this get up to 398, clear 398, get to that high a day, 398.40, I get long three contracts right there, clears high a day, gets to 399, little bit of size, gets right through 399, Tape starting to speed up. Buyers are clearly showing that they're in control, but I am clearly in the money. I got filled at 540. The contracts are currently trading at six by 630. Now I don't wanna let these go red, but I wanna give it a chance to see if it has one more push higher. Coming up to the psychological hole number 400, struggling a little bit, but finally breaks right through it. Instantly just got over a dollar, about a dollar 50. Very nice quick move. So now any sort of weakness that I see, I just wanna get out of this trade but the premiums moved very nice and I just took that pop. So got out at $7.14 for almost a two point move on the options. So it was a very fast scalp trade, but I ended up making 518 in just 47 seconds. And that was it. This was the only trade that I took on Friday. So listen to my one and done and called it a day. So that was a quick overview of why and how I trade options. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.